Well, hello kite foilers and welcome back at the kite foiler kite foil foil school. And we're back again in the jungle with Rolf van der Vlucht. Well, Rolf, you've been talk we've been talking a lot about all the hydrofoiling and uh, the technique uh, behind it. But uh, I think uh, we just still miss uh, miss one little thing. That little stick on the bottom. What does it do? You mean the fuselage? Yeah, I mean the fuselage, uh, Rolf. You have those in uh, in different sizes as well. So what does it do for me? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, like I said, um, literally, what does it do? It keeps the front wing and the back wing together and connects it to the to the mast. What do what does it do for you? Uh, for example, if you make it longer and shorter, how is that going to change the, the your experience on the water? I think to be quite short, you could say um, this. You you kind of already feel what's going to happen just from common sense if you make it small it's going to be responsive it's going to uh, yeah it's it's not going to take a lot of effort to uh, make it change direction mm -hmm. uh, if you make it longer it's gonna be like a long truck on the road for example it's gonna have more um uh, yeah a bigger radius to uh, uh to turn it but it also but it also gives you but it also gives you a lot of uh, a lot of stability and that translates into stability uh, indeed if you uh, if you stand on something that that turns very slowly then if you have for example a gust and you have to react to this gust by stepping back on your board a little bit then uh, this longer uh, fuselage gives you some more time to correct and it won't immediately pop out of the water while you're trying to regain your balance so, uh, so So why do you need uh, such a long mast anyway? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think also most people who kind of start to get interested in hydrofoils, they go first like, yeah, but why is it so long? I mean, it doesn't fit in my car. It's uh, it's just too big. I'm going to make uh, it. I, 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 I get that question a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so the question, do you really need this long mast? My answer, yes. There's There's... Yeah, I don't really see a practical way around it. And I'll try to explain uh, why I think that is the case. Uh, you can already see it a bit in this picture over here. If, you're, if you want to write uh, hydrofoil, it doesn't help to just... Okay, I'm going to draw a new picture anyway. So if this is your board, this is the water surface, and this is the mast, and this is the wing. And you're standing here. And the kite is pulling you in that direction. This doesn't work, standing straight up like that. You need to tilt the board and uh, keep yourself from being dragged downwind. Mm -hmm. So by tilting the board, you go like this. And the wing comes a little bit over here. And then if you look at how much space you've got left, here you're almost touching the water. Here you're almost getting out of the water. So basically that explains why there's actually no other way than to make this mast yeah, quite long. Let's see if my little man fits in between. So there's no other way than making this mast quite long because otherwise you'll always be touching your board in the water and sticking your foil out of the water, which gives you all kinds of crazy problems. Ah, but we're going to get a uh, spray again. You're going to get s a lot of spray, <laughs> yeah, because you're uh, kind of diving into the water yourself. You get slowed down. Yeah, that's not what we want. So, yes, you need a, you need a long mast. Oh, uh, well, boys and girls, just uh, keep that in mind. You really need a long mast. You want to know more? Subscribe over here.